Monday night. Is that right? Okay, so if you're on the search committee, please come and and because uh, you got another interview coming up. Tuesday night, the deacons get together at seven o'clock. Wednesday night, no kids clubs because it's the night before Thanksgiving this week on Thursday. And then I guess Sunday we're back on the usual schedule. Coffee nine thirty, church ten thirty, and kids clubs on Wednesday, right? Should be good. To let you know, as I mentioned last week, that uh, because of concerns about COVID, we will not have a community Thanksgiving service in on site, but it will be online, and Pastor Scott has been coordinating that. He's a chairman for our ministerial. And um, so starting tomorrow night at 6.30, the service will be on the Alliance Channel 220, and it will also be posted on YouTube, and the link for that will be on the Al Sister Baptist Facebook page. So it will be on at 6.30 all week, Monday, up until next Sunday. Clear on that? For those that have cable or whatever. And uh, again, thanks for everybody who helped put together all those Christmas boxes. Um, it was a great response, and we appreciate that. Uh, lots of uh, prayer needs, and again, the, the big praise is for Kiana, who got to go home early, and uh, that's always a good sign, and so we're thankful for God for the strength and healing she's received. Keep praying, and then for the rest of these uh, many needs. Anything else that should be mentioned? I'm off to a good start then. All right. Would you stand for the invocation, please? Lord, we thank you again for the great weather. It, it just brightens our day, literally and emotionally, to have sunshine out there and that good weather to travel in. And I pray, Lord, for our service this morning, as always, that your spirit would be speaking to us and through us as we worship you and praise you and thank you for the gift of your love and life within us. And uh, for the week ahead, Lord, for still a lot of travel plans in spite of the pandemic and cautions and concerns we have, but Lord, for whatever gatherings there are, Pray for your mercy, for your protection, both in the travel and within the gatherings themselves. And um, Lord, we pray again that whether it's through these vaccines that they're developing or through your, your Spirit's power, you would guard us and protect us and keep us safe physically as well as spiritually. So let us sing with joy and give thanks and praise to your name, which is above all names. Pray this, Jesus, in your name. Okay, let's sing our praises and ask the Lord to bless us.
how we will count our blessings. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. 
I wanted to see more than any other. The trip I was on was for pastors only. And uh, I was living in Nebraska, fly from Omaha to New York City where I gather with all the other pastors going on this trip. And then we fly overnight, the, the Red Eye Special, to Israel. That was a long, long flight going over the Atlantic, going over the Mediterranean Sea. Landed in Tel Aviv, got there about 6 p.m. around sunset. And we get our luggage, we clear customs, get on board a bus, we drive to Jerusalem where we checked into our hotel. This is about nine o'clock at night and we have a late supper. At that point you would think we're all exhausted because basically for two days we got maybe two or three hours sleep on the flight over all that water. And it's 10 o'clock at night, but hey, I'm wired. I'm in Israel. I'm in Jerusalem. And apparently that was the same adrenaline rush that a lot of us had. There were probably, what, three dozen of us on that trip, on that tour, but there were a dozen of us after supper sitting in the lobby thinking, here we are. And then two or three of the guys in our tour, just fellow pastors, come strolling into the lobby and they say, hey, anybody want to go see the Wailing Wall? And I'll be, yeah, that, that's the place I want to see most of all. And I'm sure we'll see it tomorrow, but why not see it tonight? You know, tomorrow's not guaranteed for anybody, right? So, these guys say, yeah, we've been here before. We know how to get there. Just, just follow us. <laughs> okay. So, strength in numbers, there's probably 15 of us that go walking out of the hotel and we're walking street after street, block after block. Beautiful night. I don't know what the temperature was, but it was very pleasant. And Except for the street lights, it's dark, it's quiet, and we're just following these two or three guys. And after walking, I don't know how far, we come to this big stone wall, which is what used to surround the old city of Jerusalem. We come to this big gate cut into the wall. I forget which gate it was, but we went through the gate, and then we're in the old city, and we walk block after block in crooked, narrow streets, you know, they built them for donkeys and pedestrian traffic back in the day. And most all the buildings, shops, homes are two stories high. And you can't see much of anything except where you're walking this way and that. And at a certain point, I could see there's a glow above the buildings on the left. And after walking maybe a block or two, we round a corner in the building and there it is. The Wailing Wall. And it's all lit up with these floodlights. And you know, it's probably about 11 o'clock at night now, local time. And I'm thinking, you know, there's not going to be anybody there. In fact, I expected it to be dark, but no, it was all lit up with floodlights. There's hundreds of people there. Some are just tourists like us who are just dressed in, you know, jeans and shirts, maybe a jacket. And then there's dozens and dozens of Orthodox Jews there by the wall with their blue and white prayer shawls and the Yamaka, is that how you pronounce it? The skull cap that they wear? And I guess I had known this, but I've forgotten, but it's a practice of Orthodox Jews to write their prayer requests on these little pieces of paper and stick them in the cracks in the wall between the stones. And so all over the Wailing Wall, you see this, these white lines from all of these prayer requests that they would stick in the wall. And I guess some authorities clear them out at least once a week or more often, so you got more room for more prayer requests. But it's just hundreds of people, and I'm thinking, wow, look, this is the Wailing Wall. This is the Western Wall. And if you don't know what that is, it's the Western Wall of the Temple Mount, built by King Herod, on which the temple used to sit until it was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. This wall, Jesus saw this wall. The apostles saw this wall. I'm standing on ground they walk on. This is special, and my mind went. Lord, you can take me home now. This is, I can't get any better than this. And this coin reminds me of that. But we have something far greater than the Holy Land and standing in a place that Jesus walked and saw with his own eyes. 
we've got a hope of going to what I guess you could call the holiest land where Jesus will be in our presence and us in his presence forever and ever. Yeah. yeah. And that is what we're going to talk about this morning. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and verse 15, Paul wrote about the indescribable gift he said, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. So what was he talking about? Well, the first rule of interpreting scripture is look at the context. What is said right before it or after it is usually going to explain it, and it does here. Verse 13, he talks about your confession of the gospel or good news of Christ. Well, what's the good news of Christ? Verse 14, the prayers for you in our hearts that will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. The surpassing grace God has given us as a gift. Second rule of interpreting scripture, well, if it doesn't really, really clarify in the context what he's talking about, you go to something else that the author wrote. And so what else did Paul write about that was a gracious, surpassing gift of God and a gift? Well, a couple of verses I learned many years ago in Bible camp, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, for by grace you've been saved, through faith. And that's not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not by works, so nobody can boast. Or Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's what he's talking about is the indescribable gift. We really can't appreciate in this world, in this life, just what that's going to encompass and what we're going to experience there. Now, before I went to Israel, I had seen lots of pictures of Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Nazareth, other places, the Sea of Galilee. I've seen the pictures. I had an idea in my head what to expect. But you know, being there, seeing it with my own eyes in 3D and, you know, smelling certain uh, senses that, that come from being in the Sea of Galilee, or, or maybe in a fish market in Jerusalem, or whatever. Okay, and you hear the sounds, and you hear the, the Jews with their, their prayers as they're by the wailing wall, and, and they're you know they're and they're bowing down like this. That was their habit, and all of that just makes it so much more real than just a two D picture, even if it's in color in a book or on the internet or whatever. It gave me an idea, it gave me a notion of what to expect, but being there, far greater. And that is what we have with the scripture. It'll give us pictures of, of heaven and what eternal life is going to be like, but it really can give us a full experience once we get there. That is going to as it used to say, blow our minds. It's going to be something to overwhelm our spirits. It's going to be so wonderful. Paul just alluded to that. This verse in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined or conceived of what God has in store for those who love him. You know, we really can't grasp it. All we have are these pictures Photographs that give us some idea of what to expect. So we're going to look at some of these pictures just to remind us what to expect. And you've heard this before, but they say repetition helps us remember. They say repetition helps us remember. They say repetition <laughs> helps us remember. Which is why athletes will practice all week running through their plays, whether it's football or volleyball or basketball or whatever. They will practice those plays over and over so when it comes game time, they know what they're supposed to do. 
It's why people who play keyboards or sing will usually practice the music over and over so they know this is where the fingers go, and this is how the voice goes, and this is what we're supposed to do when we actually get together to worship on Sunday morning. It's why actors and actresses rehearse and rehearse and do their lines over and over so when they have the actual play or the musical, they will know what they're supposed to say and when they're supposed to say it. And so I'm just going to remind you of things you've already heard, things you already know, things you've already read about, but you need to remember and remind yourselves of these truths because sometimes life gets hard and it gets difficult and to keep our eyes lifted above the junk that happens in this world from time to time is to remember, ah, I got something really, really good to look forward to. I said this a few weeks ago. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, our citizenship is in heaven. We have that dual citizenship. Yeah, we're most all, I think, citizens of America, but our real, forever, eternal citizenship is in heaven. From whence, it says in the King James, or from where we look for a Savior. And He's going to transform our lowly bodies and all the problems we have with that into a body like His glorious body. Or this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 where Paul elaborates about the hope we have in the resurrection. It starts in verse 42. The body that is sown or buried is perishable, but it is raised imperishable. It is sown or buried in dishonor, but it is raised in glory. It is sown or buried in weakness, but it's raised in power. It is so in a natural body, it's raised a spiritual body. And then he goes on to say it's not just the, the outward shell that's going to be changed, but the inward as well. Verse 49, and just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, referring to Adam, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven, which would be Jesus. And it's all going to happen so quickly. Verse 51, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, which is a euphemism for death, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, in the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. And this is all a gift made possible by God. Verse 57. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can't do it ourselves. We don't earn it ourselves. We just depend on His grace. John writing, chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, What we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when He appears, we will be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is, and we will be pure just as we just as he is pure. Folks, this is something to look forward to. We will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. This perishable, mortal, weak body is going to be changed into something like his glorious, eternal body, which will last forever and ever. And what's inside us, our hearts, our, our spirit, our soul, whatever you want to call it, is going to be changed from the likeness which has been flawed ever since Adam and Eve fell, and we've done the same thing. That's all going to be cleaned up, erased, and we're going to be given a new image, just like Jesus, just like Adam and Eve were made to be and to reflect in the first place. Inside and out, we're going to be different. And where we're going to be again, is going to be so much better. You know, a few weeks ago I showed you those pictures of those multi-million dollar mansions in Hawaii. <laughs> As I said then, I'll say, no, that's nothing compared to what Jesus is preparing for us. John chapter 14. I go to prepare a place for you. You know, in my Father's house, there's many rooms or mansions, depending on your translation, but I'm going to prepare a place for you, and then I'm going to come back 
to take you to be with me so you can be where I am. That's a great hope. And what's that home going to be like? Well, you go to the last couple of chapters in Revelation 21, 22, and it talks about a new heaven, a new earth. It's going to be a new Jerusalem and whatever else there. And he says, again, there's, God is going to be with us. He's going to be on the throne. We will live with him. He's going to dwell with us. We're going to be in his presence forever and ever. And that means all that love that he wants to fill us up with will be there constantly. And we're not going to have a problem of receiving it. That's what's holding us up here in this world. The Holy Spirit wants to fill us with his love, but we, we resist it sometimes. And we get in the way. We become our own obstacle receiving God's grace. But there it's going to be received fully. And it says he's going to wipe every tear from their eye. There's going to be no more crying, no grieving, no pain, no death. The old order of things has passed away. What's that old order of things? Well, it's the curse that this world has been under. And again, this year haven't we seen that? We wrestle with this pandemic. That is going to be gone. All the bad stuff in this world, whatever it is, birth defects, diseases, injuries, weather, wars, all of that, gone. It's never going to be in a place that is perfect. Now, Thanksgiving is this week, and so I'm trying to remind us that we have something to be very, very, very thankful for. Not just what he blesses us with in this world, but especially in the next one. And then it's Christmas. And that's the big buildup, especially in our culture, which isn't necessarily looking at the spiritual gift that Christmas is. But, you know, I don't know if you shop on Sundays, but there's, I think, uh, 28 shopping days until Christmas. And I'm sure your kids or your grandkids, maybe yourselves, are looking forward to what's under the tree this year. You know, when I was a kid, that was a big thing for me. Wow, I can't wait to open up whatever those presents have. But there's something far greater to look forward to. Back to Philippians chapter 3. Our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Paul was thinking of. He was thinking of Christmas in, in the spiritual sense of, wow, that's when I get to unwrap these gifts. That's when I get the new body. That's when I get the new heart. That's when I get a new home. And I eagerly await that. Romans chapter 8, he said the same thing. We eagerly await our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Boy, I can't wait until that happens. Another letter he wrote, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. You eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. You know, think like a kid waiting for Christmas. I can't wait until December 25. Now, I thought about this a lot Tuesday evening. In 10 minutes, I got three pieces of bad news. And you know, I was working on this, and on about 9.45 Tuesday evening, I got a text from my sister said she just found out that one of my cousins lost her father-in-law through COVID. I didn't even know he was sick with it. I don't know. Apparently, it took a week, 10 days, and he was gone. But anyway, one of... One of the family died from it. So I called up my cousin you know, and talked to her, and she said, Oh, did you know that our cousin Donna passed away from cancer on Sunday? No, <laughs> I did not know that. So, some piece of bad news. So I talked to my cousin a little bit longer, hang up, and I see, Oh, I got another text message on my phone. And this came from the wife of a good friend of mine in Sioux Falls. Oh, my husband is in the hospital with COVID and he is very weak. He can't even talk. I'm thinking, Lord, what a world. But after I got done praying 
Fort Hurd. And I, you know, I hung up and I thought, well, thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. That that's the hope I have for, for my family, two of whom have passed away, and for another good friend who at that point I didn't know what was going to happen. But thanks, you know, we don't have to dwell in the grief. We don't have to think that's the end. There is hope for a reunion with them and with us, with our Savior who loves us so much. So these are things for us to think about this week, and I hope all the time, that regardless of whatever this world and this life throws at us from time to time, we have something up there that is going to make us just forget about whatever struggles we have down here. So, I hope you'll take that to heart. I hope we um, can be thankful regardless of what we're facing this week, and this year, and the one to come. We're going to stand, we're going to sing, give thanks. So I'd like you to please join our worship team. <laughs> Thank you. 